All right guys, it's Ryan from RJ Martindale and in this video we talk about my thought process in building the most recession-proof plumbing business I can, how I gain my first 50 monthly home care customers and then from 50 to 500. Last month in November, RJ Martindale alone, aside from BHE, had a record month of £158,000, okay, which is amazing. Our home care only accounts for 15% of them sales, but it's that 15% that allows me to sleep easy at night. The reason I say that for the first seven years of running my business, them seven frustrating years, was carrying out jobs like bathroom installation, first and second fix, new builds, HMOs, even boiler installations fall into this category. Okay, once you put the marketing out there, you've created the lead, you've converted it into a job, you've been paid, that following month, you've got to do it all again. Week after week, month after month. This is the same for roofing, joinery, plastering, double glazing, electricians. You've got your grafting like mad, but that following month, you've got to do it all again. This isn't too bad when you're on your own or you've got a couple of vans, it's manageable. When you've got five, six, now we're up to 10 vans, that is a big problem. That is where all the stress comes from. You have nothing compounding in the background apart from your customer referrals, which you can't overlook that. When you carry out a job, it might not seem it but at the time, but them customers providing you do a good job, they're compounding in the background. But I wanted compounding by way of cash. So that following month, I've got some money that is building in the background. And that is what gives me the confidence to push on marketing, putting vans on the road, and in turn, growing the business. And that's why over the last three years, I stripped out all the other stuff that we was doing. Like I said in the first YouTube video I made, the bathrooms, the first fixes, the new builds, all that stuff, stripped it all away. We just do boiler installations, home care plans, and reactive stuff that was coming in on the day, which are, jobs that will be done inside one hour. The, the only reason I've not dropped boiler installations is because they feed into service plans and you've got a synergy between the two. There is not a synergy between bathroom installations and home care plans, okay? It's just more operational drag, stress on the lads. I just got rid of everything, okay? Here's another five reasons why we do service plans. Excuse the scribbling, I've done this once but didn't have my microphone on, so we'll go again. Number one, residual income through summer. Big thing for me. Previously, you would go into summer and you'd have the worry, not sleepless nights as such, but it was a worry knowing, first of all, what work's gonna come in and what cash flow am I gonna have through them summer months? Home care service plans allowed us to have residual income no matter the season. From January through all the way through to December, we've got predictable money that is coming in every month. Number two, more control over job placement. What this allows you to do is manipulate your own diary. So these, these home care customers that you're signing up, they do require a service every year. So instead of having loads of services, September, October, November, we pull these back three months during the summer times through from, let's say, May through to July, August. We're getting our services done to free up time for paid work and emergencies during winter. The, the reason you've more control is the customers are not really bothered. They pay monthly anyway, and if you're doing the boiler service early the following year, they're happy, as opposed to customers that are paying a one-off that are, that are adamant that they want it doing in September, October, November. Number three, compounding. This was the biggest thing for me. I wanted to do this 10 years ago when I started my business, but a relative close to me actually said, you're not ready for it. You're not ready for the service plans. You've got to have, you've got to have the management, management team in place to facilitate all these customers. Okay, but three years ago when we were ready to go, this was the aim, to create compounding cash every month. So what that means is, to give you an insight onto our business, we sign up 500 pounds worth of service plans on average every month, and we've done that for the last 36 months, between four and 600 pounds a month. So let's say, for instance, in January, you sign up 500 pounds worth of clients. That following month, you do another 500 pound, but you're carrying that 500 over. 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and now we've got 24, 25,000 pounds per month coming into the business without us doing anything within reason, within reason. Okay, we're not chasing for that work. We're not trying to convert more sales. It is coming in. And then this, 
is what gives you the confidence. This is what takes all the stress away. It's very difficult to scale a business when you're starting from scratch every month. Number four, my process in trying to create the most recession-proof plumbing business that I can. And that is by taking a small amount of money between 18 and 34 pounds a month off a lot of people every single month. My job is to try and dilute the turnover as much as possible to an individual customer. Okay, so what that means is these customers that are signing up, they're only taking 0.001% of our turnover. If I lose a handful of them customers, it doesn't really matter. If you're a big, if you're dealing with big contracts, some players out there will find that a big head headache. Let's say they're doing a million pound in sales and they've got four customers throughout the year at 250 grand. It could be new build, developments, anything like that. Okay, you lose two of them customers, you've lost half your business. A recession comes along, you lose a handful, you've no business left. Recessions do not care about the contracts, but the smaller, <clears throat> the smaller I can get this figure, within reason, and the more I can dilute the customers to the turnover, the more chance I've got of getting through tough times. If anything, the customers look at it the other way. They think, flip and heck, it, it's tightening up, but if I cancel my boiler cover, and the boiler breaks, I've got a big cost to spend. So <clears throat> overall, that's my logic. Some people will completely disagree, but this is what, of, this is, everything is based on this. Small amount of money off a lot of people every single month. And number five, reduced invoicing and automation. Dealing with the home care, 16 to 1800 customers that are paying us every single month, we create one recurring invoice, we set up zero for automatic reconciliation with Go Cardless. So that's reconciling all the time, as opposed to every time we create an invoice, it's a different type of invoice. It's got to be paid. We've got to chase payment. All that type of stuff disappears, which is another big benefit. So that's the five reasons from a business point of view as to why we do monthly service plans. As you can see, there's more higher level thinking than just creating some residual income every month. My job is to take the stress away from the business and give security for myself, my team, and all the overheads that are coming in every month. The residual income and the way we've set up the business now reduces the stress massively. Now, it does sound like I'm just talking about the benefits of the business and nothing to the customer side, but it's, ab it's absolutely essential to have all this dialed in to then offer the best customer service to all your clients. We'll jump in the van now and I'll tell you how we gained our first 50 customers and then from 50 to 500. I do just want to add as well, if you are a business that doesn't have the ability to add residual income through the trade itself, that doesn't mean that the business is not right, but it's absolutely essential that from your trading business, you price correctly and you're earning enough profit to then invest into another vehicle that will work for you in the background. That might be property or uh, shares, whatever you decide to do. And that's not through you personally, that's your business itself. Or you set up another company as a group structure where there's loads of tax benefits there as well. That's what we're doing. Six months ago, RJ Martindale, the business, was buying a commercial property, okay, through RJ Martindale, but cut a long story short, it's a video of itself. I lost that building, we lost about 25 grand, but the, due to a number of reasons, but that is what we're doing. Aside from getting the home care, the service plans, we'll be using the profits of the business to invest in property, through the business or through a group structure so then when times if they do get tough you've got something that you can leverage to help you or you've got something that's working in the background that's growing while you focus on your business right the three things that we did to grow the service plan sorry i was rambling on a little bit there the first thing we used type it office services they were the girls that used to answer the phone just before the office and what they they actually suggested to me, let's send an email out to all your customers. Okay, very basic, like blurry logo, the body of the text was okay. And we sent this email through MailChimp to our existing customer database. And we got 18 customers that signed up. We left a little link in there. It was a Stripe link to start with. We, we, we soon moved over to Go Cardless. But it was a little Stripe link and 18 people signed up. 
literally within the first 24 hours and honestly that was the best feeling i've had them first 18 customers it were unreal <clears throat> and that's what we did the rest of them thought the email was spam it was awful but that's how we signed up the first 18. the second thing that i did was as soon as soon as they started that was that just gave me the bug for it that was like this is what we need to do and that was all that was on my mind so what i would do is go to fix a boiler i'm very much on the tools myself here i would go and fix boilers i'd love fixing boilers anyway so i would turn up and if i could fix a boiler at no cost other than my own time i would offer the customer the job for free if they want to sign up on a 15 quid a month boiler cover some of them as well were parts and small parts it was all a loss to me but i weren't bothered because all i wanted to do was get them numbers up if I could get them numbers up and not lose too much money, I was happy. And I think that got us from like 18, 20 to then 50 odd customers. That's what we did. So just literally job after job, um, asking, is it something they'd be interested in? I soon after that used Fiverr, the cheap Fiverr um, website, and had a logo created that was awful. I thought it were mega, but it were awful. I had something done. I had some three tier pricing graphics made some little leaflets and we just hand them out. And that got me to about 50. The third thing we did that had the biggest impact and I was really unsure whether this would work at all because at that time was doing the website, doing the SEO and starting the PPC stuff, uh, just before the PPC stuff. But the people would tell me that traditional marketing was dead. At this time was going through the pandemic, it was locked down and most people were stuck inside. And I had a little, magazine that came through the post glossy magazine a5 i think they are <clears throat> and i was looking through it but all the adverts were awful there were a lot of adverts in them but they were awful all the same quarter page eighth page half page there were some half pages but the the mark of the actual brand and the marketing the sale of the advert was a for instance a plumber would be boiler installation tap repair bathroom installation power flushing big list of everything that they do and I thought, right, these are my three guidelines. I want a double page, centre double page I asked for, centre double page spread with three tiered pricing, three emotionally triggering questions and a CTA call to action backed by some reviews or a testimonial. That is what I wanted. At this time, I knew that the likes of BG and the national home care providers we're going through some tough times themselves. They was doing the fire and rehire. They obviously got themselves in issues. They was doing the fire and rehire. And I knew they were struggling with engineers and they're also struggling to facilitate the customers. So the three questions that I had was, have you been let down by the big boys? Question mark. Has your boiler been serviced in the last 12 months? I knew that they hadn't. Did your engineer come out within 24 hours? I knew they couldn't. And that's the ad that I sent out. We started off with, I think we sent to, might have been four or five areas, which could be maybe five, 10,000 magazines. And then I increased it to 50 to 70,000, all, the, all these areas. And I remember <clears throat> the first job that came through on an email that I just signed up. And I said to Joanne in the office, where's that customer come from? She said, I don't know, I've not spoke to him. And he'd gone on the advert, that was the first time he'd gone on the advert then gone on the website and then signed up straight away. And I remember the boiler, it was a Wiesman 100. And I actually turned up to that boiler, horses were blocked. It were a right mess, but I weren't bothered. I stripped it down, stripped it down and practically rebuilt it. It was the first customer that came from that marketing ad. And by the end of the 12 months, 2020 slash 21, we'd signed up 500 home care customers. And, and that was it then. From that point on, the money that was coming in, I was pushing straight back into all areas. Still the website, was still doing the, uh, the magazines, was doing PPC campaigns where we would, uh, we would market to get new boilers and then we'd install a boiler and then sell home care off the back of it. And that is what we would do. Now, I do want to make it clear with them adverts, we were, we were changing adverts up all the time and some months they do absolutely nothing. Okay, so we would split test, we'd send two different adverts out. When people are talking about marketing and what you need to do and adverts not working, we would send two different ads out 
to a hundred that we got we did get up to a hundred thousand people but roughly it was around 60 60 to 70 thousand and we might sign 30 or 40 customers up so we was burning through money until we got past the point where we now got we've got healthy budgets going in and we're still climbing so it was almost that a loss to start with but the that timing of when we did that ad campaign was perfect lockdown people stuck at home they was reading everything that came through home care providers could not provide the service that that they had in the past and we just as many engineers out there you picked up a lot of work from the national suppliers moving forward to where we are now there are higher leverage activities that you can do instead of ppc seo traditional magazines i watched one video by alex hormozzi on acquisitions and i watched another video on james sinclair on buying businesses within three months the bhe the other business presented itself and because of what we've done with rj martindale over the last three years i knew i could do the same with bhe okay in this one transaction that we've still not we're still actually not fully got over the line we have had, instead of adding 500 pounds per month this one month we've added five to six thousand pounds into our ex existing business as well as more vans more engineers and a great lady catherine in the office so there's other things that you can do to speed up to get you to that next level over just your general marketing and that's what we've done my plan now is to figure out how do i get from 25 grand a month to a hundred thousand pound a month i'm not sure how long it's going to take me or what i need to do to get there but i feel it's absolutely essential that your business is growing and you're providing more opportunities for your staff your team and everybody around you that's the end of this video if you found any value like subscribe any questions put it in the comments and i'll answer them as soon as i can cheers